New York City, the city that never sleeps, and Red Bull, the energy drink company which has taken the sporting industry by storm in the last 20 years, you'd think it would be the perfect combination to make New York Red Bulls a dominating force in the MLS, but that has not been the case. They have won just three supporter shields, they have never won the MLS Cup, they have never won the US Open Cup, and have never won a continental competition in North America. So today, we are looking to change that all and make my favorite city, New York, and the Red Bull group combine to make New York Red Bulls and the dominant force in the MLS. And you would all recognize the cover star, Emil Forsberg. They have started to use their links with RB Leipzig to bring in superstar players at the end of their careers. And Emil Forsberg, who is still a top level European player, is now here in the MLS as one of the best players in the league, let alone just in the team. When it comes to the MLS and looking through the season preview, New York Red Bulls are considered to be the 26th best team out of 29. So we have got a big old task on our hands but I genuinely believe we're going to be good enough to go ahead and do it now in terms of transfer budget we have got 2.4 million pounds to go and spend 55,000 pounds in wage budget I am going to be using transfers in season one which is very unorthodox for what we normally do here on the channel but I think it's worth going ahead and doing in the MLS especially as the MLS season has only just started in real life so this is the 5th of February we're going to skip forward a couple of weeks time I'm going to show you guys a few unbelievable free agent signings and signings we've managed to make here in the MLS with without breaking any rules while well, completing the you know the full registration rules and how I went ahead and done it the MLS is seen to be a massive task of how to register players that you can't get anyone in you want and yes you have to be quite clever in who you do bring in yes you have to look at the ages of players whether they can be a designated player and all that business but genuinely it is not that difficult and I'm going to show you that exactly here today that you can have a great time playing in the MLS without it being a massive task. So let's get into some transfers and I'll show you exactly how I've registered the squad. So I've made two signings and number one is Badu Indaye, released from Adana Denispor over in Turkey. This guy is a standout MLS midfielder. He is 33 years of age, but he's consistent. He likes big matches. He has got great stamina, great natural fitness, great bravery, work rate, marking, a very good ball winning midfielder. And if we look at his contract, we've got him signed up as a senior player there is no designated player to him he's earning thirteen thousand pounds a week and comes over for his first time in the yellow mls after having a long career over in turkey a few seasons in england with stoke in the championship in fact a 14 million pound transfer in 2017 when they're in the premier league which is absolutely mental but here he is now at new york red bulls so welcome in badu Ndaye. and the second signing is one which is an mls superstar he has spent over five or six years at lafc and we have brought carlos vela to the new york red bulls we all know who carlos vela is he is one of the best Mexican players of all time 74 caps for Mexico great dribbling first touch flair off the ball work great technique and agility has had I mean an illustrious career here at LAFC 34 goals and 31 games in one of the seasons absolutely ridiculous 35 games and 12 goals just last season and is still more than good enough to rip up here in the MLS and look at his contract he is a designated player now all that might sound like a whole load of jargon a senior contract a designated player contract there's reserve contracts there's under 22 initiative contracts but it all makes a lot more sense when you come to the registration screen if you're loading up an MLS save for the first time simply click on your squad overview and registration and you come to this wonderful screen here so you can see a we are meeting every single requirement uh, maximum squad size maximum salary cap we are just under by 500 pounds which is ridiculous uh, a much number of internationals outside of the mls i mean usa sorry uh, we've only got five rather than ten we've got three out of three designated players ten off budget players um a minute, a maximum of four non-reserve non-homegrown players six reserve players and four non-homegrown reserve players so that all sounds like a whole load of jargon and i'm going to tell you right now we're looking at this the things you need to worry about the internationals you need to make sure you have got a majority united states of america team designated players do not sign an extra one keep to the three i believe some teams have four and some teams do trade to get more i think that's how into miami i've got the likes of suarez messi jordi alba jordi uh, sergio busquets and they've got four rather than three so some teams do have more than three but don't go over your designated players list again simply go squad registration and have a look how many you've got you can see we have got the thing down here 
which is cap impact, potential cap intact, and their wage. So if start of season one, this changes every single season. It goes up based on the MLS getting better as a league. Football Manager has coded it in just like it does in the MLS with the salary cap increases every single season. So you're going to see this as we go through the rebuild. But we've got a player here like Emil Felsberg who is on £125,000 a week. But his cap impact is just 10500 because that is the maximum for a designated player. Same with Carlos Vela. Same with Dante Vanager. And then with the likes of Lewis Morgan, Badu Ndaye, who has got a perfect example, a wage of £13,000, but a cap impact of just £2,300. Then you might wonder how on earth have you gone ahead and done that? Now, when you click on a player like Badu and Daye, you go to their contract screen. You can see this little lovely thing here, the salary cap impact. Now, we have traded this down from 13000 to 2300 I can't show you how to do that on Badu and Daye. We're going to have to click on someone else like Corey Burke, who I'm not planning on using. But for this example, I'll be able to show you exactly how this works. So you can see his salary, 8750 His cap impact, 8750 But we have a lovely thing here called general allocation money. Now, I have no idea what general allocation money is. But guess what? I don't need to know. I just know that I've got it and I can spend it. And if I spend what is it 500k there worth of general impact or gam money you can get from 2.1 million to 1.7 million and reduce the impact from 8750 pounds down to 2300 it is as simple as that. I'm not going to confirm it. Well, I will confirm it because I've really got a save point, actually. So we'll go ahead and do that. The salary cap impact is now £2,300. And you can see now that his actual impact, rather than being 8750 is 2300 So because we've got all this GAM money, we might as well spend it, get some better players in, like Badu and Daye on a free contract, and just reduce his cap impact down to 2300 I could go through the whole team. Elias, who I ended up loaning out uh, for £1.4 million. Pounds. Uh, he has a wage impact of 7700 150. I could have kept him theoretically and just reduced his wage impact down to keep him here. John Tolkien, who is one of the best MLS players and a fantastic young 21-year-old American, you do not want to be letting players like this go. This guy is an absolute stud. He has been wanted every single season by every single MLS club. And why do you think that is? Because he's one of the best players in the league. He's from the USA and he doesn't have a massive salary, just £6,750. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and reduce this to even further, get it down to 2.3k, which is the minimum for a senior player and that would take around 200k off the wage budget so if you've got players that you're struggling to keep because they're you know doing too much on the salary just bring their uh, salary down using the gam the general allocation money and it'll make your life 1000 times easier now in this rebuild we're not only going to be going ahead and signing free agents like we have done in this season we're going to go ahead and sign players from europe from the mls using other teams try and get some swap deals going there is a whole lot i'm going to be teaching you and in terms of the drafts as well they're all useless, but I'll stop at every single one and show you why I don't think they're very good. The team we've got, the 4 2 3 1, that we use on a lot of different rebuilds with attack and wingbacks, inside forwards, advanced forwards, Forsberg in the cam, getting them into that role. Uh, Edwin and Boulier and Daye, Cornell in goal, Duncan at right back, Tolkien at left back, Royes and Ellie in centre back with Edelman and Ndaye in DM, Vela, Morgan, Forsberg, and Vanyajar. The, uh, the backups, I don't know a lot of these players, but they're here and they're decent. Marucci, Marina, uh, Sar. Alexandre, Afori, Stroud, Amaya, who looks very good, Freddie Amaya, uh, Harper, Estrella, Carmona, Julian, Hill, and David Silva. Not that one. He is a youth academy player. And Mr. McCartney as well. Now, when we get to the end of the season, I'll also go through the development center. So stick around for that one. Um, now, in terms of the MLS, we obviously were predicted to come down in 27th. Then a few signings have got us all the way up to 17th. In terms of competitions, we are in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, which is the Champions League of the uh, North American, South American, and uh, the Lamar hunt us open cup something they've never won before and the mls cup is something they've never won before either so we're looking to win them free in this rebuild as well as why not add a couple of supporter shields in as well so let's get in to season one with the new york rebels and just before we get into the results of season one i want to thank a absolute legends on screen right now you guys are the patreon members and you pay five pound or two pound a month to help support this channel you do get the rebuild files at the five pound a month tier and it helps support me absolutely massively you've got no idea so if you've ever loved what you've seen on the channel and uh, you want to go ahead and support on patreon the link is down in the description thank you the legends on screen let's get in to season one 
Kicking things off then is the MLS Eastern Conference and yes, the New York Red Bulls have gone ahead and absolutely smashed it. 74 points, two points clear of DC United. A fantastic season here at New York Red Bulls. An absolutely brilliant season with a 36 goal difference, 23 wins, five draws and just six losses. But that's when you go into the big overall competition where you have the supporters' shields. And we've gone ahead and won that as well. 74 points, DC United in second and 72. The Western side just wasn't quite as good 54 points was the most there from lafc the eastern conference was much better and i'm going to come to it with the supporter shield we went ahead and won the whole thing so the supporter shield is ours it's something they've won three times already but it's a great thing to go ahead and tick off the list and i'm very very happy that we have gone ahead and done that now when it comes into the wild card rounds of this uh was it the mls cup we don't go into the wild card rounds we go into the first round we faced up against atlanta united and won one nil so we're through to the next round and we go on into the semi-finals of this one we faced up against chicago and lost two nil which is very very disappointing but not the end of the world it's something we are certainly looking to tick off in this rebuild in terms of the stats this season overall christian benteke yes the same benteke you know and love is an absolute demon on fm 32 goals in 32 games i mean that's simply ridiculous. He was fantastic. He got the most goals, the best player. Uh, Emil Fergberg was in second with a 7.4. Uh, Jahazi was second on, or first on assists for DC United as well. Benteco, the most player in matches. And Carlos Coronel was second on clean sheets. And a Carl Duncan, second on uh, yellow cards as well. And it comes down to the team overview stats for goals wise. We were joint, th th well, basically third, I suppose, because DC United and Salt Lake shared second. So we are coming in, in third place on 70 goals. We did concede the least on just 33 possession wise we kept 53 percent in the ball but the points per game being two is the most so we have won the league which is great fantastic well i guess sort of because we've won the supporter shield which is like the whole league combined into one it is a little bit confused i understand we get a little bit confused with that bit but what we've done is we, we won the main league but we didn't go ahead and win the mls cup now you guys might not know what that really means but when you go into the league you have your eastern conference and your western conference the top nine teams from both go into a sort of cup competition after the league phase and you go ahead and play these little rounds we just went through and the final was between Cincinnati and Chicago and the MLS Cup final was between Cincinnati and Seattle and Cincinnati went ahead to win it so that's what makes sense that makes sense in my head I hope that's come across like it makes sense it might have been a little bit confusing but there we are. We, yeah, it all makes sense now. It all makes good sense. Now we're going to go off into the CONCACAF Cup with the 2024 season. Where in the first round, we were drawn up against Tigres. So I know that Tigres are one of the best teams in the North American sphere. Obviously one of the best teams in Mexico. And we go one up thanks to a fantastic set piece before they have a set piece of their own to make this 1-0. This is a two-legged affair. And this is at our stadium in New Jersey. And a ball at the back stick makes it 2-1 to Tigres. We're going to go ahead, vote with Edelman a great switch out to Burke he gets the ball down beats his man finds the ball into Emil Forsberg that skips past him it drops to Vanny Azar to make it 2-2 but Tigres were not done there Flores with the ball up wide to Kanyamar 2-5 Flores yet again beating Coronel and making it 3-2 before a last ditch 94th minute interception from Vanny Azar before a fantastic run a ball to Harper and a 94th minute goal makes it 3-3 and gets us a tie to take back to Mexico and to try and take on Tigres at their ground. Now, this was always going to be incredibly difficult because Tigres have a fantastic team, just like Diego Lanes there, the guy that used to play for Real Betis, finding a ball in Herrera to make it 1 1. John Tolkien, however, finds Lewis Morgan, who gets a great back heel there into Edwin, back to Lewis Morgan, and he fires home to make this game 1 1 in this one and 4 all overall. Edwin down the line on the left hand side is going to get a ball through to Forsberg, skips past him, and Vanias are there to make it 5 4. Tigres were not done. Pojuelo finds Diego Lange to Ayala in the middle who finds Flores. He fires it past Coronel to make it 5-5 in the first round of this competition before our new signing Badu finds Nealis to find Edelman to find Forsberg to find Edelman the American dream an absolute screamer from 70 in the 75th minute from about 30 yards out not 75. A win in this one 6-5 on aggregate and we are through against Tigres in the first round of the CONCACAF Cup.
which takes us into the quarterfinal. We faced up against Atlanta United, a very good side in the MLS. And just the one goal here in the first leg, a strike from Morgan from distance past Cohen, makes it a 1 0 lead to the New York Red Bulls. And we head into the second leg away from home at Atlanta. We had a much more difficult time of it. We did get off to a great start with Forsberg, finding a back stick cross into Reyes to make it 1 0. But Atlanta are a very strong side. Almada there finding Etienne Jr. fires home to make it 1 1 before a great response from Edel on the ball, sitting deep, plays the ball into Forsberg, who finds Carlos Vela and drills at home for 2-1, in off the post to make it 3-1 on aggregate before Almada finds a corner into Morales to make it 3-2, but that was all she wrote, and a 3-2 victory on aggregate sends the semi-finals of effectively the Champions League here in the American side of the world. And here we face Leon from Mexico, and Emil Forsberg gets off to a great start in just three minutes before just nine minutes into the game, Carmona drives down the right-hand side to find a great solo effort and finishes at home for 2-0 and that was all she wrote after 10 minutes away from home in Mexico we're going to bring them back to New Jersey and see if we can secure a final place in the CONCACAF Champions Cup well Leon were going to make it difficult they'd made the big trip stateside and Rodriguez on the ball on the left hand side finds a ball into Nico Lopez in just 17 minutes to make this one 1-0 one and 1-2-1 one, one on aggregate Morgan over finds a cross into Badu in the second half to make this one 3-1 aggregate. Badu finds Carmona who finds Minia down the right hand side. He gets a ball into the box for Forsberg to make it 4-1 in the 87th minute but we weren't done. A Forsberg penalty in the 93rd minute made it 5-1. A convincing victory setting up the final of the CONCACAF Champions Cup against the Canadian team Toronto. An Emil Forsberg free kick from 30 yards out in the top corner got us off to a fantastic start before John Tolkien on the left hand side drives to the byline finds Forsberg in the box and he was put into looking to put the team on his back. Osorio, however, whips a back stick cross into Dio to make it 2-1 and the first half was done there. Insigne, a back post cross and Rosted was there to make it 2-2. And it was going to be 3-2. Thompson finds Flores. Flores on the right-hand side finds Thompson. Ball in the box. A mistake in goal. And 80 minutes had gone. And that is all she had wrote. The CONCACAF Champions Cup final was won by Toronto. So in the first season, we have not won the MLS Cup. We have won the Supporters' Shield, but we have not won the CONCACAF Champions Cup. That has been won by Toronto, and it goes to Canada. Absolutely fuming. We were on a fantastic run there, but didn't quite make it happen in the big game. There is, however, another continental competition, which I didn't realize was actually a thing, is the League's Cup, and this is between the Liga MX and the MLS. Now, in our group, we had Charlotte FC and Cruz Azul, and we zoomed through that one to take us into a whole host of games in this competition it's very weird it's split into like a million different bits of west central east south and then you get to the playoffs and we're going to go straight into the semi-finals because wherever we were which i imagine would be east we went ahead and won that one we faced up against chicago and had a 4-2 victory setting up the final of the league's cup against la galaxy and my oh my did we turn up for this one john Tolkien found stroud the left hand side to find carmon in the box to find our star striker vanny azar to make it one nil in 25 minutes and just five minutes later, Emil Fersberg from the spot makes it 2-0. And just another five minutes later, Sarno in the box finds Stroud sitting deep to Badu to Nealis to make it 3-0. I think that took a deflection off Nokuita. And then Nealis on the right-hand side is going to throw a ball into Harper. Back to Nealis with back stick. Carmona is there, 4-0. We have poked it home, Forsberg in the end. And we have won the League's Cup playoff final. Now, I don't know how big of a competition that is. I believe last season it was won by uh, LA Galaxy as well so it's good to go ahead and take that one off their hands but very happy to win that one so the mls sport shield has been won two far or three finals now actually because the mls uh sorry the two finals because the semi-finals the mls cup the final the concaf the final the league cups and now we go to the lamar hunt open where we also got to the final of this one and guess who we were facing not Messi's into miami they have been awfully quiet so far but la galaxy yet again and then goman on the right hand side does find harper who drives into the box sets the ball back to carmona and he makes it one nil before just two minutes after that one a harper 
Harper throwing finds Duncan. Duncan finds Harper to Edwin to Forsberg. A great team goal, 2-0. And the Lamar Hunt Open Cup has been won as well, which makes this a very successful first season. The Lamar Hunt, the League's Cup, the Supporters' Shields. A treble of sorts. Not the one we wanted because we haven't won the CONCACAF Champions Cup or we haven't won the MLS Cup, but a very, very good season. Our star players this season were the likes of Dante Vanyazar, Emil Forsberg, Carlos Vela, Lewis Morgan, Winkleman Carmona and Cameron Harper. All very, very good, strong players and looking to stay around for the team for next season. If we do have a look at the contract situation here at the club. Uh, looking to expire this year is Badu Ndai, who is probably going to go ahead and stay. We have offered him a brand new contract. Right, Mira, Dylan Ellis and Elias all looking to go. Um, but the club is looking very, very strong. We are great. We have done a very successful first season here at New York Red Bulls. A historic season for them, I imagine. But we're looking to tick off two more big trophies, the MLS Cup and the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Now, in terms of money, we have got £10 million to spend in transfer budget and £200,000 to spend in terms of wage budget. There is lots of different things that happen from the end of the season to the start of the next season. So we're going to go ahead and do them individually right now. First up is the MLS waiver draft. Now, as we read this piece on screen right now, the draft consists of two rounds of 31 players available for selection. We're the first pick in the 20. Sorry, our first pick is the 25th overall selection. If a team passes, it may no longer participate in the rest of the draft. Players picked in this draft see their current contract expire with the club they're at, and it gets transferred to their brand new club, but their contracts are all looking to expire soon, so you have to go ahead and make that contract as quick as possible. Now, I have already done this, and I picked up Esawani Buda. This guy is a very quick winger uh, from San Jose. I like the look of him. I wanted to test out what the waiver draft was all about. He looks decent. He had a fairly average season last season season and generally this is the sort of player that you can pick up from the waiver draft you can see his contract is running out he is not absolutely fantastic we now have to go ahead and offer him an actual contract which we will go ahead and do because i want to check out how this whole waiver draft thing works but we have basically poached him off san jose because they've put him up for waiver now honestly a lot of these rules in the mls and why it gets so confusing is because there is a lot of different things which you could be doing which i actually done none of i didn't add a single player to a waiver draft i signed just that geezer to see how it actually worked in the waiver draft there is lots of different drafts which genuinely are absolute waffle and the contracts as well just look very confusing but absolute waffle cake and you can get past them using the the things that are in the game and it's very very self-explanatory and i genuinely think a lot of people get put off by the ms because the first time you load into it there is a hundred rules chucked in your face but if you just go ahead and actually play and sort of read the things that come up and learn what's happened you will learn it very very, very quickly i have already done a video which i'm going to try and remember to link up there on fm23 of uh, how to actually play in the mls it is a fantastic video it goes through everything in much more depth than this rebuild but genuinely i don't think you need anything much more in depth than this rebuild because i'm showing you you can play in the mls you can dominate in the mls you can sign fantastic players on free agents just by playing the game as you normally would now yes there is some confusing bits like the salaries and like the salary cap and the different contracts but they're very, very self-expansion when you go to sign a player it tells you which one he's going to be on. If he's going to be a designated player because he's very good and sort of using your brain, someone like Emil Forsberg from the Bundesliga to come to the MLS is going to need a bigger salary, which can't impact the salary cap. If that makes sense, because he's on 125 grand a week, that's already over your salary cap. So how do you get around to that? Give him a designated player contract so you can still give him that ridiculous money, but the salary cap impact is just £10,500. In my head, when talking out loud, it is very, very simple. And I hope you guys can see that it is very simple. There is a few more drafts to go through, which I'll quickly run through. And then I'll go for the transfers I have done and the players I have brought in. Because I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to just bring in free transfers. We're going to make some big deals. The re-entry draft. Another one which, to be honest, is very, very pointless. We're actually saved the draft so we can go into it. And I can show you exactly what this sort of draft is. It looks like there's loads of different things going on. It's very simple. There is a whole host of players here which are absolutely absolutely bang average they are on some decent whack because they're all mls players which have gone ahead and been released into miami our first pick we're gonna see the next pick into miami didn't pick they passed it because these players aren't good enough vancouver didn't pick uh san jose didn't pick minnesota didn't pick finally a pick has been done by columbus crew they've picked up Eric zavlaketa 
No idea why he is absolutely useless. I would never go ahead and pick him up. He's not even from the MLS, so doesn't pick any rules there. But that's the sole player which are in this re-entry draft. We're going to skip to our pick. We could go ahead right now and get Adama Diamande on a free contract with no extra fee, poaching him from his club in the MLS. But why would I want to do that? He looks absolutely rubbish. And for the three seasons of this rebuild, there was not a single player I picked up in the waiver draft or in the re-entry draft. If there's someone in here that looks fantastic, if you're not first pick, you're not going to get him anyway. This thing is absolutely pointless. The next thing you have, which I think is pretty cool, is the Combine. If anyone is an NFL fan, you know exactly what the Combine is. In NFL terms, it's, you know, which position can do the fastest sprint over 40 yards. They'll do different tests. Like this is a speed test, an agility test, a jumping test. That is all the tests we've been given here. I don't know if there's different days, but this is day number one in terms of the speed test. Right winger Raimundo Campos from Texas United is the quickest look at him he's absolutely rubbish and 99% of people through the draft system are absolutely rub rubbish Joe Edwards also quick to be honest he's never going to be that good we're going to go down into the agility test and look at goalkeeper Nicholas Palmer winning the best agility that shows you what absolute waffle these things are and the jumping test is right back Luke Rangel who's six foot six bloody hell this guy could actually be a bit of a demon uh, very good determination very tall he's absolutely rubbish at football but he can jump high again the draft the combine sorry is a, a very cool niche thing that's with the MLS but again you don't need to know about it you pretty much need to have a look at this see if there's anyone that you like the look of remember their name because we're now going to get into the super draft and we are now here at the super draft and the hottest prospect is Rikayo Itakawa he's got two and a half star potential one and a half star ability and he is the hot prospect yes listen to what i'm saying these amazing players which are meant to change the world are just pretty average there is quite a good player here in nicholas ramirez um from a amateur club in america uh, he's gonna be in the draft and i imagine he's gonna get picked very very high up so as we continue on we can see the draft and you can see the recommendations of these players there is some because your scouts go ahead and scout them all off the bat you have recommendation of what they are so you know who's going to be semi-decent david hernandez for example is a pretty decent center back He's nothing special and he's the best player here. Four star potential means he's going to be, I don't know, around what we're looking at in terms of four star ability just in the team. If we can have a quick look, um, we say center back here, Andres Reyes. He can get as good as Andres Reyes, a decent MLS player, and you're going to have to be the number one pick to go ahead and pick him up. So if we see the next pick, it's going to be actually Jesus Rodriguez from Houston, who's going to get picked, who's a very decent center back or wing back. Next pick is going to be set number two, and we're going to keep going. And Columbus again, go ahead and pick up number one in David Hernandez. We'll go forward to our pick because we've done very well this season. We are 25th. That is how the MLS system works. Uh, the better you do in the league, the lower down your pick is. So if you're playing FM right and you're doing quite well, you're never going to really get the best players you can see here there is a bit of a diamond in the rough jordan valencia is available for us to pick up he is a determined teamwork work great winger who's decently fast got some decent technicals i've honestly got no idea who i actually went ahead and drafted so i won't show you me drafting anyone i will just pass it to the assistant and ignore who it actually picks but to show you they aren't fantastic we can go skip ahead to our next pick no we can't because we haven't got any more picks so let's just finish it off i suppose shall we 42 teams are all done a lot of players got drafted a lot of players didn't now that is because there is another round i believe so if we go to complete draft there is going to be another little thing at the end there is like a, a re-entry super draft in uh, a couple of days time i think it's the 18th possibly where i think they go ahead and have like another combine and you see how they done in terms of the super draft how they rated ours that's actually relevant because i've got a completely different save file which is here and it shows us as new york red bulls being down in a c plus down here not too bad c plus is average honestly it doesn't really make much of a difference look at the players we picked up espinoza one and a half star he looks pretty average good determination good leadership probably develop him into more of a, a central midfielder he's not great at passing he's not particularly quick he was one of our best picks valencia is the player we actually managed to go ahead and pick up in the other simulation as well which is great to see so he is here and as is ibrimagov korchemovkin from russia uh, he is again a decent midfielder he is never going to be absolutely special i think that the thing to sort of notice and realize is that these drafts mean pretty much nothing you're never going to build a superstar team from doing a really good draft selection you might find there's a superstar wonder kid in the draft and you can try and trade up to get that the trades to be honest 
as well are very, very difficult. If we have a look at this trade here, which has just come through, the Dallas are looking to get our first round pick for the 2027 uh, draft, uh, the first round pick in the 2028 draft, and an international player slot plus money. And they're going to give us Jesus Ferreira, who is a very good player, actually, from SD Dallas. And this doesn't seem like an absolutely awful trade. It's actually quite good because, like I said, the super draft, we're probably going to be at the top of the MLS anyway, and uh, would be quite a good one to go ahead and do. Now, obviously, I didn't do this at the time. Uh, like I said, I have different simulations for each point in the career that I save at. Um, but this is actually not too bad of a trade. But trades in general are a whole load of poppycock. It's very difficult to get a team to sort of agree to what you want. If we go to the transfers out, there is like a thousand different. Well, there has been like a thousand different trade offers for the likes of uh, John Tolkien, which I told you not to trade. Daniel Edelman, both young American uh, wingbacks and central midfielders. Lewis Morgan has a lot to him. Dante Vanyazar has a lot to him. Carlos Vela has a lot to him. A lot of the American players get a whole host of interest because a lot of clubs don't have a whole host of good United States American players, whereas we are building that up here at New York Red Bulls. And we're just not going to get rid of them because why would you? If it's one of your registration rules to have USA players and you've got some good ones in your club, don't get rid of them. It's as simple as that. Now, let me show you the silence I went ahead and made for this offseason. So overall, I spent £7 million and two and a half million of it was on Ezekiel Fernandez. He is a 22-year-old Argentinian from Boca Juniors. Now, he looks absolutely brilliant for him in a standard, and he's just 22 years of age. Very well-rounded. I like the look of him a hell of a lot. His contract, he is a young designated player, but you can see the salary impact is just £3,100. That is capped because he is a young designated player at that amount which is absolutely fantastic so similar to this there players where they're on 120 grand a week and it costs just 10 the young ones are 15 grand a week or whatever you agree at and it caps out at just 3100 now when he goes over 22 years of age he'll need to go as a designated player which i guess will cause you issues because you'll have four designated players and just the one well the four designated players rather than the three that are available so you have to go ahead and shift some things on but for this season Ezekiel fernandez is a absolute superstar and another signing is luca Aureliano, 24 years of age argentinian signed from vasco da gama great speed great flair great dribbling finishing and first touch had a good season uh, last season over at Vélez. actually never played a game for vasco da gama we just poached him and they've earned 1.4 million pounds how that's happened i don't quite know he is a designated player he's not a lot of money he just had to be a designated player because his salary was too high to get him down to the senior contract and you'll find that some players just want to be designated players so it is what it is and luca orlano did come in and become a designated player and that was allowed to happen because Carlos Vela has at the club to go to Guadalajara in Mexico. He is obviously a very good player, but the 36 years of age, he declined quite a lot last year. He was good last year for us, definitely, and a very good signing on a free contract, but the improvements have certainly been made. And there's just one more signing, a free signing of Fabian Rangel. This is a 24-year-old Colombian central defense midfielder who looks absolutely fantastic. He's on a senior contract on just £2,600 a week, which is absolutely nothing. He's a free signing as well. I've been released from junior down in Colombia. Played a lot of games last season for Deportivo Cali there as well. And was just an absolute stud to pick up on a free contract. Very happy to go ahead and get him in. Was an absolutely fantastic signing. And has made the team look a little bit like so. Coronio in goal. Duncan, Tolkien, Reyes, Eli, Fernandez, Edelman, Orellano, Morgan, Forsberg and Vanishar as your starting 11. Marucci, Minia, Sarno, Alexandre, Afori, Stroud, Angel, Harper, Estrella, Carmona, Hall and David Silva as our, you know, sort of backups as well now i want to really say this whole video isn't me having a go at anyone that doesn't understand mls i've sort of just had a bit of an epiphany that the whole of this rebuild has been me telling people that they're rubbish at doing mls rebuilds and to not be scared it is genuinely very very fun and i'm quite passionate because you can see i quite like the new york red bulls i have their shirt and the people that don't like mls saves i think have just never dipped their toe in them and never tried it so i promise i'm not here to sit here and shout at you and tell you you must do an mls save and you're rubbish if you can't understand it I just, I, I'm quite passionate about it. I, I really enjoy MLS saves. I think they are very good. I think a lot of people are missing out on not doing them. Um, you can see here, obviously, with the designated players we have got, we are underneath our £92,000 salary cap. That goes up every single year, as mentioned, based on how the MLS is growing as a league. And obviously, financially, money goes up as well. So the salary cap goes up uh, in proportion with the growth rates of money, I suppose. I don't know how it works and how they work it out, but that is what happens. Um, salary cap impact-wise, we're looking at Zico Fernandez, and Luca Orlano, and Emil. Forsberg. But yeah, some very, very good players here and the cap impact is looking very good as well. Cameron Harper, we wanted to get him in the team. We didn't have enough salary impact. You literally just drag that gam down and do that. We have got a lot of general allocation money. So if 
we needed to, we could go ahead and trade some. We could spend some GAM money and get some better draft picks, for example, or we could get better, you know, like Jesus Ferreira from FC Dallas. If we really wanted him, we could go ahead and get him. Now he's a designated player, which is the reason which I did end up signing him because we didn't have any space for him. But players like that, so if there's another USA player off the top of my head, I can't think of one, but say, I don't know, Giovanni Reina was in the MLS for some reason. I could go ahead and spend like all my GAM money because it's very valuable to a lot of teams and I go ahead and bring him into the club using that. But genuinely, I haven't had to use it once. And like I said, I've done this whole three year rebuild without dipping too much into the draft without doing too many trades without sort of making anything too confusing you can play mls like it's a normal mls well like a normal fm save you've just got to take into effect a few little things which actually when you look at them when they're explained and when you sort of actually play with them and use them they're very simple and they don't really bother you again until the next season where you just did the same thing so trust me it's great fun we're gonna go into season two and try to make season two and season three a hell of a lot quicker than season one i'm not gonna go ahead and stop at each draft etc just know the players we got from were useless or never used that's pretty much all you need to know but let's get into season two we have the concaf the lamar hunt i imagine the league's cup is going to come back at some point the mls supporter shield and the mls let's get into it so yet again, we absolutely smashed the Eastern Conference, 75 points, 10 points clear of Chicago, which made us automatic winners of the Supporters' Shield again, which is great to see, 10 points clear. The Western Conference was won by San Jose and LAFC coming in second, but we went ahead and absolutely dominated that. And when it comes into the Eastern Conference first round, we were faced up against Montreal. This whole one-two matches thing has come up again. It was two all and one on penalties. I don't know if that actually means anything. I mean match was replayed honestly again a whole bunch of waffle when you actually go through and play it is not that confusing we won the game on penalties that's what happened um, when it comes out into the semi-finals we played against orlando and won that one and the eastern conference final went ahead and beat nycfc to set up our first mls cup final and this was played against san jose and the mls cup as mentioned is like winning the league it is a big deal and orellano gets us off to a fantastic start just 11 minutes in and 88 minutes in brand new starting orellano is going to be absolutely instrumental got a fantastic solo effort and pokes at home for 2-0 and makes new york rebels the first time in their 30-ish year history mls cup winners which is absolutely fantastic buzzing with that we have won that one we have won the support a shield as well when it comes to the lamar hunt open cup last season we faced up against la galaxy in the final well i don't know if it's a bit of deja vu but it's the exact same thing this year i'm gonna go head off and get into a fantastic start angel in dm finds a ball over the top to dante vanillajar and he makes it one nil in 23 minutes firing part jonathan bond and gail then finds duncan down the right hand side he's gonna go ahead and drive a ball to the back stick and that buddha signing we made on a sort of waiver draft scores a goal in a big final this is the most important thing in the world it's not i'm joking vanny azar finds carmona to make it 3-0 and we are lamar hunt us open cup winners yet again back-to-back -back seasons that is a treble in my eyes we've won the mls cup we've won the supporter shield we've won the lamar hunt us open cup can we go ahead and win the league's cup no we can't we're going to go ahead and get knocked out in the quarter final i believe of the eastern side of things two cruisers all we did indeed it was 4-2 and orlando city went on to win this one so no quadruple just yet that the league's cup we have still got the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Well, we went in in the second round and faced up against Seattle and beat them 8-1 on aggregate, which is absolutely mental, an absolute pounding in the second round. And we went into the quarterfinals and faced up against Chicago and got off to an awful start as Jordan Shakiri gets them 1-0 up. And then Halle Selassie finds Jordan Shakiri to find a ball into the box. I don't know what's happening there with the centre-back, but Prispolienko makes it 2-0 before we mess up at the back again and Jimenez finds a ball to Pozoblienko and he makes it 3-0 in 45 minutes. Away at Chicago, a very difficult place to come apparently. We are going to go ahead and get a goal back in the 48th with Duncan on the left-hand side, a ball into Vanillajar and he scores make it 3-1. But that's all she wrote here in Chicago. Back to New York, well, back to New Jersey I should say and uh, to see if we can go ahead and turn this ship around. Well, Forsberg with a corner finds a great backstick post to Andres Reyes to make it 1-0 nil before edelman finds fernandez to find duncan down the left hand side he's going to go ahead and get a ball in the box to buddha to make it 3-3 and we were actually going through and we're actually drawing at this point we're going to go through because papa on the ball finds up with the line to carmona carmona finds vanny and now we are going through 4-3 on aggregate 
until an 87th minute ball in from Plata to find a ball to Glasgow at the back stick makes it 4-4 and we go to penalties. Forsberg with a great penalty and Brady can't stop that one. Chicos scores for Chicago and then comes the Stroud and he hits the post. Great. Ornstein makes it 2-2. It then comes to Ellie and he fires at home to make it 2-2. Glasgow then steps up and misses and Coronel saves before Ngoma steps up and he scores. We're then going to see Plata step up and he scores, which then comes to sudden death. And Angel misses and Chicago score and they are through through to the semi-finals and we are out of the CONCACAF Champions Cup in the quarter-final, which is absolutely gutting. It makes it even more annoying as well as that bloody Chicago went ahead to win the whole thing. 2025 winners, they went ahead in the final and beat Tigres 2-1 on extra time. So we actually faced up against the eventual winners, which means we are probably quite close to going ahead and wing it, winning it. In terms of our squad this season, selection info-wise, we were very, very good again. Dante Vanyazar, Emil Forsberg, Luke Gotiano, Lewis Morgan, Usani Budia, who was the signing for the draft actually was quite good 11 goals and six to six six goals two world assists from duncan nine assists for john tolkien a very successful season 2.9 million pounds in the budget 230k to go ahead and spend in wages money wise we are absolutely fine we are dominating in every competition we just want to tick off the concaf champions cup so let's get in to the signings for season three and signing one is American international Augustin Agnello. He is a player over at Sparta Rotterdam. I believe he is at SC Campbell in real life. He is a decent young American striker slash winger slash cam with great determination, pace, acceleration, finishing, dribbling, first touch, consistency, loves big matches and is a good MLS player. And this is the exact sort of signing which I think you guys need to be making if you are playing in the MLS. American players which are in the European leagues, in South America, in Asia, Australia, wherever they are if they're good enough try and bring them back home because if they can come in and be a senior contract player they don't do any designated player nonsense nonsense they're not international players they are usa players which can play in the league and are very easy to get onto the registration book so augustine and yellow was number one before the second signing of a superstar striker was needed and philip kuich was that man great acceleration pace finishing determination composure extremely consistent and also likes big matches as well signed for 2.6 million pounds from hadjuk split after having a couple of decent seasons over there he's just a senior national contract player on five thousand pounds a week and we had to sign him because our superstar striker for the last two seasons has carried us dante vanyazar has left to go to middlesbrough who are in the championship we simply can't compete money wise 40k a week he is now worth 11 to 13 million pounds we got five million quid for him you saw at the end of the last one he was asking to leave and he has now left which means our team is pretty much built as our own we have our new superstar striker in Kuwich, Orlando, Morgan and Forsberg, Edwin and Fernandez in DM with Minia, Tolkien, Reyes, Eli and Coronel in goal. The backups are looking like Quintero, Martinez, Kevin Sarno, Alexandre, Arfori, Estrella, Rangel, uh, Agnello, Khalid, Carmona and David Silva. I will just show you the transfer history to show you there was a few players here signed in the draft. Uh, that was last season. Uh, this season with Philippe Sanchez, who was signed from West Virginia United, a youngster which looked decent. Amir Khalid, the same thing. Courtney Mensah Evans, the same thing. Aaron Martinez, is the same thing and Anthony Quintero they are all pretty average pretty bog standard but five signings through the draft system which are going to be in the squad so if we do see them they are because of the draft they are nothing special like I said the draft is very easy the recommendations are given to you anyway so it should be quite simple to get your head around in terms of the competitions the same four competitions plus the league cup at the later date so let's get into season three and see if we can lift the all-important CONCACAF Champions Cup oh for season three we have broken the streak of supporters shields which is absolutely gutting we're on 59 points behind st louis city who have gone ahead and won it all in terms of the eastern conference we were still the best team in front of new york city fc in front of Atlanta united and uh you know still a decent decent season indeed but not winning the community supporters shield thing now when we do get to the mls cup we did manage to get all the way to the final and we faced up against the winners of the supporters shield st louis fc i'm going to get off to a start 
start here with Jesus Diaz. Finds Lowen in the middle to find Zhao Klaus to find Jackson. No surprise. This is the St. Louis FC team. I've got no idea if any of these are. They do make it 1-0 before Edwin gets in the ball. He finds the ball out to Mina on the right-hand side. And he's going to drive it in the box to Orlando to make it 1-0 in 29 minutes. Mina now on the edge of the box. Finds Fernandez. Fernandez goes on the left-hand side to Tolkien. Again, the American dream. A fantastic goal to make it 2-1. He is a superstar. If you're doing a save and it's not with um, New York Red Bulls, try and get John Tolkien. Everyone else tried to. I didn't let him go. He is brilliant. QH there on a defensive mistake from St. Louis makes it 3 1 before Carmona finds Mina down the right hand side. He's going to go ahead, get a ball in the box to Kuwich as well, and makes it 4 1. An absolute demolition, which we weren't finished on. Morgan on the left hand side doesn't quite win the ball, but that man John Tolkien does. He gets the ball into Kuwich to make a hat trick in the MLS Cup final and makes it 5 1 before finally a goal from St. Louis FC. It is a Red Bull sandwich here. St. Louis FC are the bread, making it the second goal, and this was the first and the last. That was the worst analogy I've ever used in my life, but I hope you got a laugh out of it. 5-2 victors in the MLS Cup, and it's a fantastic competition to go ahead and win in back-to-back -back seasons. We didn't really have anyone being a superstar standout other than Emil Forsberg is still a great player and joined second in assists. Two wins in a row is fantastic, and that is what we are looking for. In terms of team stats, we scored the most goals. We were fifth joint on conceding the least, just four above uh, sort of the best in Orlando City. Great in position as well, so we are a very strong MLS side. Now, we're going to go off into the Champions Cup of CONCACAF, where we join in in the second round after getting a first round bye, and we face up against Pachua in Mexico. And Emil Forsberg finds Kuwich to make this one 1-0 one in just six minutes. A fantastic start for Mina. Finds Oriano down the right-hand side. He peels the ball back to Forsberg, who finds Kuwich in the box, and he makes it 2-0 in just 13 minutes. A fantastic start. Orlando down the right-hand side yet again is going to go ahead and get to the byline and finds Forsberg to make it 3-1. I'm realizing now how much I say go ahead. So if you're doing a drinking game, go ahead and have another little sip. Orlando finds a ball back stick to Kuwich. Back stick and Kuwich has said a lot as well, isn't it? 4-0 and a, an absolute domination here of uh, Pachua. A back stick cross. They're going to go ahead and make it 4-1 in 38 minutes for Martinez. One of the draft players sets it back to Angel. He finds the ball to the edge of the box to Fernandez, who fires home an absolute cracker to make it 5-1. And uh, I'm not going to show you the second leg because it was only a 1-0 victory to us, but a 5-1 smashing of Pachua secure us into the next round, the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Cup, where we're going to go ahead and face up against Orlando City. I've said it again. The go-ahead merchant is here. I can't stop saying it. Tolkien finds Carmona who finds the ball into Orlando at the back stick to make it 1-0 before Orlando City. Going to go ahead go ahead again. It's actually turning turn, coming to me now how much I'm saying it. Enrique scores to make it 1-1. When I'm in full flow, the go-ahead just comes out. Carmona finds Forsberg to find Fernandez to Edelman to Orlando and Mina fires home to make it 2-1. And in the final settings of the game, Forsberg finds Buda to Sano, makes it 3-1. Uh, another absolute screamer there from Sano. And that's 3-1 at New York Red Bulls home stadium, which means we've got to go away now to Orlando, go on a few rides and see if we can make it through to the semi-finals. Well, an Ojeda corner finds Gonzalez on the edge of the box and a very odd goal there as Enrique heads home to make it a nice tight game before Headley drives down the left-hand side. He gets to the byline and he finds the ball in the box. An own goal there by Ellie, making it a level affair, I believe, at this point. Kuwich finds the ball to Mina down the right-hand side. He drives past his man, finds the ball to Backstick and Kuwich is there. Backstick and Kuwich again. Orlando now with a free kick. A bit of a deflection, but he makes it 2 all on the night and Reyes finds... Finds Buda, who finds the ball back to Reyes. Awful interception. Torres is through. He scores to make it 3-2 to Orlando, but 5-4 to us on aggregate. A fantastic victory and the semi-finals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. That was against San Jose. And Espinosa is going to find a ball back to Del Cui to find Espinosa. He scores a screamer to make it 1-0 to San Jose before Sano drives down the left-hand side, keeps it in his possession, finds Buda, and Kuic is there to make it 1-1. Before we're going to go ahead, I said go ahead again. He finds Fernandez to Buda on the left-hand side. He finds a ball into the box to Carmona to make an own goal and make it 2-1 to New York Red Bulls. But this game was extremely tight. In fact, the whole tie was very tight. Del Cui finds the ball into the box to Ebibose to make this one 2-2. Before we are going to go ahead... Go I said it again, didn't I? Carmona's on the ball and he finds that angle to Mina to make it 3-2. 
And we are not going to be finished because Loria steps up and makes it 3-3 and San Jose get a goal back. It is 3 all. Then three away goals might come in clutch. Because in the leg at home, it was a 2-2 draw. Thanks to an 89th minute goal from them, a 90th minute goal from us. And we went through on away goals. Thanks to that last minute goal from Augustine and Yellow, the brand new American Dream signing. An extremely tight game. One that I thought it'd be best to show through this piece. You can see the time of the goals. A ridiculously tight affair. San Jose thought they were through. But Augustine and Yellow gets us in at the last minute. A backdoor victory and sets up a final against Cruz Azul. And the team from Mexico were going to put up a fantastic fight. A great free kick there from Rodriguez in the seventh minute makes it 1 0 before one one in just a minute later ellie with the header before just one minute later again mina to the right hand side finds angel to orlano to make it 2-1 and we are taking what was an awful start of an early concede to so a fantastic start being 2-1 up orlano then finds a ball into the back of the net to make it 3-1 and we're going to go ahead and make it four as well the concaf champions cup is coming to new york and to new jersey buddha a fantastic goal actually ended up being a very shrewd piece of business picking him up on that three from the draft was actually very good from me uh, and tuna finds a ball through to Favreveli and he scores to make this one 4-2 but that is all she wrote and New York Red Bulls have won the CONCACAF Champions Cup for the first time in their history absolutely brilliant and what happens once you win that you don't just finish there you then go into the Campiones Cup which is I believe the Libertadores which is the Europa League equivalent and the um was it the Copa Libertadores and the Sudamericana sorry which is the Europa League equivalent and the Loop Libertadores which is the Champions League equivalent you go into the Campiones Cup and play like a Super Cup version which is great fun it'll be nice to win this one as well so Mina and Forsberg link up for Mina finds Serrano to make this one 1-0 one to ourselves Ellie then finds Orlano to find Mina to find Forsberg and a back stick cross to Kovic of all people makes it 2-0 in 29 minutes and the first half demolition carried on Morgan a ball in and Kuic was there to head home for 3-0 Ellie then finds a ball to Mina out the right hand side he then beats his man finds Forsberg Forsberg finds Kuic and this man is just a goal scoring machine 4-0 in this one Morgan then finds a back stick cross to Reyes and he scores to make it 5-0 this is ridiculous. Idrissi finds a ball in and a Lin 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 Linchinovsky gets a header in and an own goal from Coronel before Jay Rowan on the right hand side finds a ball to Jordan. It's cute that they're still trying. At this point, it's 5 2. And that is all she wrote after a Gravantes goal. And an absolutely fantastic victory means this season we have won the Supporters' Shield. Well, no, we haven't. We've won the MLS Cup, second in the Supporters' Shield, the CONCAF, the Campiones Cup. I'm not going to show you all the highlights from the League's Cup, but you can see here we won that one on penalties against Club America. And the Lamar Hunt, we got knocked out in the fourth round by Salt Lake. So a treble, one, two, three, a quadruple winning season to finish things off, including two, um, what is it called, a continental competition which is absolutely brilliant the standard performance philip kukic forsberg orellano noah eli morgan a brilliant season from mina and buddha as well i'm just very very happy i think i've shown the mns is a fantastic lead to go ahead and play him and that people need to just give it a try and have some fun the registration rules can be confusing but i hope they have been explained and shown in a way which makes them actually very easy to get around just use your general allocation money don't worry too much about the drafts. The competitions are split into the Eastern Conference and Western Conference, but you end up all together anyway. So don't give that too much attention and have a good time. It's Football Manager. It's a video game. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll speak to you next time.